This is AutoLine Daily reporting on all aspects of the spooky global automotive industry. Well, that didn't take long. Ford and the UAW already reached a tentative labor agreement. It's clear that the UAW and Ford continued to negotiate all aspects of a new contract while the union held a month-long strike against GM. Ford has always had a more proactive relationship with the UAW, so it's not so surprising that it was able to reach a settlement fairly quickly. Now the question is, what will happen at FCA? Four years ago, UAW workers at Fiat Chrysler rejected the contract and forced their bargainers back to the table. Moreover, all the corruption charges against the UAW started at the training center at Chrysler, so the negotiating at FCA may not go as smoothly as it did at Ford. Speaking of FCA, it reported its third quarter earnings and they clearly show why the company wants to merge with PSA. FCA sold a million vehicles in the last three months, down 9% from a year ago. It raked in revenue of 27 billion euros, down 1%. It posted an operating loss, but thanks to a tax adjustment, it posted a net profit of 1.2 billion euros. In North America, FCA posted all-time record earnings of 2 billion euros, delivering a 10.6% profit margin, which is exceptionally good in today's market. FCA posted a modest profit in South America, but lost money in China and Europe. And its problems in Europe are exactly where the merger with PSA could produce the most significant results. Peugeot is profitable in Europe, and if it can work the same magic on FCA, it's going to plug a major leak. And a bit of a history lesson here. This is not the first time that Peugeot bought Chrysler, or at least a part of Chrysler. In the 1960s, Chrysler tried to catch up to General Motors and Ford in Europe. It bought Simca in France, Roots in England, and Barrios in Spain, and lumped them all together into an operation called Chrysler Europe. But it didn't work. And when Lee Iacocca took over at Chrysler in 1978, when the company was teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, one of the first things he did was sell Chrysler Europe to Peugeot for the princely sum of $1. Dana is a global automotive supplier. Since 1904, we have been finding a better way by providing technologies that propel our vehicles into the future. And today, we are developing the technologies that are driving tomorrow's electrified vehicles. Dana, people finding a better way. As everyone is painfully aware, passenger car sales are slowing down on a global basis. And now the numbers show the same thing is happening with commercial trucks. LMC Automotive reports that preliminary third quarter medium and heavy duty truck sales were down 10% compared to a year ago. The drop was mainly due to weaker demand in China. LMC expects big truck sales to remain soft and forecast the segment will decline 5% this year and next. Truck sales in North America, Europe, China, and Japan are expected to drop due to economic slowdown, trade tensions, and uncertainty impacting investments. But not all regions are expected to suffer. Medium and heavy-duty truck demand is strong in Brazil, and India is expected to rebound after a big recession in the truck market. And speaking of heavy-duty trucks, Daimler is launching a new leasing program in the U.S. that may attract new customers. Rather than guess the miles that will be driven when signing up, Daimler Trucks, which owns Freightliner, is offering a pay-as-you-drive leasing program. That way a customer doesn't have to worry about going under or over their allotted miles. If the customer consents, mileage data will be sent back to Daimler via the truck's connectivity system, and then they're charged at the end of each month. There's also an additional standard fee. Daimler will launch the service in the first quarter of next year with the Freightliner Cascadia. Even though car sales in China dropped for 15 out of the last 16 months, the supplier Aptiv reported its third quarter earnings increased 6% in China. That's because the company is focusing on electric and autonomous technology. And while that segment is also weak, Aptiv managed to land a lot of newer business. It also realigned its supply chain to avoid any tariffs from the U.S.-China trade war. 
As a result, its stock is up 47% so far this year, pushing its market value to nearly $23 billion. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dana, people finding a better way. General Motors is giving more responsibility to President Mark Royce. He now oversees all of North America, South America, China, and GM's international operations. The company also promoted the head of its autonomous and electric vehicle programs, Doug Parks, to become executive vice president, leading global product development, purchasing, and supply chain. And Steve Kiefer, the head of purchasing and supply chain, is being named senior vice president and president of GM South American and International Operations. Speaking of GM, its Chinese brand Baozhen introduced a new compact crossover called the RS3. It's powered by a one and a half liter naturally aspirated engine that can be mated to a CVT or a six speed manual transmission. It also features a level two driver assistance system from Bosch, over the air updates and certain functions like turning on the air conditioning or locking and unlocking the vehicle, can be controlled with a smartphone. The Baozhan RS3 is available now in China, with a starting price of just over $10,000. For some, the Porsche 911 is the gold standard of sports cars. But up until now, the new version hasn't been available with a manual transmission. Thankfully, that's changed with a 7-speed unit that will be offered on the S versions of all of the models in the 911 lineup. Exact performance numbers for the manual were not revealed, but Porsche says the Carrera S will do 0 to 60 in around 4 seconds and have a top speed of over 190 miles per hour. The manual is also 84 pounds lighter than the PDK, and it has a mechanical limited slip differential, rather than an electronic one. Pricing for manual versions are the same as the PDK, but it also comes standard with the Sport Chrono package, which adds a number of extra goodies. And for more Halloween antics, don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours this afternoon. John and Gary will be joined by Lindsey Brook from SAE Engineering and Michelle Krebs from Cox Automotive to dissect the latest news in the global automotive industry. And if you have any questions you want answered, just send them to us at ViewerMail at Autoline.tv or hit us up on social media. That's today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on our website, Autoline.tv. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. Have a happy Halloween, and I hope all the kids out there get tons of candy.